March the 8th, 2020. Now, as you're looking at the current JPL model, notice your timestamp at the bottom, uh, today's date, of Comet C-29, or also known as ATLAS. Now, ATLAS is part of the observatory system that discovered it is where it got that name. But uh, you're, we've got some changes. One is that the nucleus or the core of the comet is starting to break apart. And I mentioned that in an earlier video when I said it could start uh, behaving differently. It would become dimmer, it, and it has, and it would um, start, again, break apart. But one of the things about this is that um, we're dealing with the slingshot gravitational force of the sun and these comets as they travel through space for again for eons they eventually succumb to that um, tug and it, it with that slingshot effect as it dives in and is thrown back into space it will break the uh, nucleus apart on these comets we saw it happen with uh, I sun but what we're looking at, I've kind of got the model flat where you can see what's called the ecliptic of the uh, solar system. The planets are kind of in a line. It's not exact. And Atlas is above this, and it's diving down. Now, let's move this model around just a little. Now, what you've got is the sun in the center, Mercury in this pink, Venus in the purple, Earth in the blue, and Mars in the red, guys. And as we look at it, I'm going to turn the model to where earth is right here in the center and we would have a earth facing perspective of the sun and at this point atlas is above us and if you were looking at the sun in the northern hemisphere it would be over your left shoulder headed towards this dive and what it's going to do it's already breaking apart at this uh, point and it's uh, between the it, the orbit of it has it over the uh, orbit of the earth and the orbit of mars or the path of it does but it's going to come in and dive between mercury and the sun right there it's above us it will dive and then go back out of the solar system that's going to go back out a lot different than it came in because it's already starting to break apart and if we all play this model through kind of give you an idea of when it will see the greatest point of strain and that's right at it gets closest to the sun and that would be measured in your distance in au and one au is uh, about 93 million miles on the average and that's the average uh, distance between the earth and the sun so now you can see that uh, atlas is 1.339 au from the sun because we're closer to the sun now the earth a average again is one au but as we play this forward, as again, we'll play it forward, and Atlas will be getting closer to the sun, and you'll see the sun distance right there, and your peak strain will be at its closest approach to the sun. But because of what we're seeing already, this path could slightly change, and we're going to take a look at that. But let's move this forward a day at a time, and you watch your numbers. We're the 9th, uh, there's the 10th, 11th, as we get closer... We'll just bring it in here until it gets its closest approach. We're at May 13th. Gonna move it around and you're, we'll kind of line this thing up. If you look now, if you're looking from Earth at the sun, and this would be May the 28th, it's getting very close and the speed is getting incredible. But what you would be seeing from the Earth as we pull this up from Earth's perspective is... If it's bright enough in the daytime, you may see it. We, I've seen comets do that before. What was it, uh, Hellbop, or was it Halley's Comet? You could see in the daytime. But um, it's going to be in a sun-facing situation. But right now, is at nighttime, you'll be seeing it in the upper arc. But right now, uh, here at uh, May 28th, you're down to 0.28 AU, much closer to the sun than the Earth. And we'll just keep going forward with this. And right in that point, right there, 0 0.86, anywhere in this strain period, as it's getting ready to throw back out, this thing could continue to break apart and completely disintegrate as we saw ISUN do. Now, um, let's take a look at some of the new um, telescopic images coming in and some of the data.
Now, these images came in two days ago, and they're from uh, astronomers at the University of Maryland and Caltech. And they reported that uh, Common Atlas's core appears to be elongating, as would be expected from a major disruption of the nucleus. In these images, you can see that. It's starting to widen out somewhat, and the comet is slightly dimming. Now, also, if you would just look at the angle of projection, we'll look at that a little closer on another image. This thing is tilted down just a little. See where the axis is pointing north? This one's kind of rising up to the northeast in this image. This one's kind of flattening out. We're going to look at one other one. Carl Banton is saying that recent measurements of the comet's position also point to trouble. The comet's orbit is now being influenced by non-gravitational forces. That's going to change it. These forces are the results of gases lifting off the comet nucleus and causing the nucleus to move very slightly in the opposite direction, sort of like a jet engine. Most active comets experience this to some degree, but Atlas's non-gravitational forces have kicked in very abruptly and are quite strong. Again, that changes the orbit. This supports a narrative of small nucleus being pushed very strongly by extreme outgassing, possibly along with fragmentation. Finally, let's not forget that Atlas is a fragment of a larger unidentified continent, also related to the Great Comet of 1844. Fragmenting is a family trait for this group of comets, Carl Batten says. Now, these three images are coming in from the G.V. Schiaparelli Astronomical Society in Italy. What they're showing, this one, if you look closely, is the 5th. This one is April the 6th, and this one's April the 7th. And uh, here, when they started, right before they started noticing the breakup, the nucleus was very tightly packed. Started elongating here, and uh, even got a little longer by the 7th. And again, that's saying to me and to them that the nucleus is breaking up, and it becomes multiple nuclei at that point. Another thing, this arrow that I put in in the red gives you the direction of the comet. Now look again at your chart here. It's got north and east. See that? Now by, in, within two days, that angle has changed. In other words, this comet, if according to this information, the way I'm looking at it, would be diving closer to Mercury. Now I'm not saying it's going to hit Mercury, but if it's starting to dip in its orbit, that would bring it closer to Mercury than to the Sun. You see what I'm saying? And if it breaks apart, like it appears that it's going to do, or is in the middle of, then depending on when that breakup occurred would give you an idea of uh, the path of the different parts of this thing as it breaks apart. And you can see in this image, and we'll look at it just a little closer right there, that it we're getting multiple bright spots now. I know it's a little hard to see, but zoomed in and enlarged, you can see, guys, there are probably one, two, three, four, five, six sections that have already broken apart from the main nucleus. And uh, I went around and around with NASA about this during ISON, and I kept saying this thing has multiple nuclei, and they, most of them were saying well, it was going to hit the sun. And if that thing had hit the sun, all hell would have broke loose on this planet. But it barely missed it, but it disintegrated into a, a V that pulled up behind the sun at the last minute of debris, guys. It was about 40 million miles wide by the time it had fully expanded up above the sun. It was amazing. It looked like an arrowhead. But uh, we're, I'm seeing it just like I saw then, multiple nuclei. So we are seeing a disintegration of the comet. What's more concerning to me is the change of the path. And I'll put one of the images into uh, my photo lab. What you're seeing in the center is the comet. And then the rear right here, guys, that's just a star streak on the background. But you can see that uh, it appears to be breaking up. It's not that solid uh, white ball that we saw in the, a month ago when we first started getting these uh, images in from the telescopes. I think this is a 10-inch telescope uh, image here. But, guys, again, it will be, uh, they're saying, dimming slightly. But it, as it gets closer, more and more images will come in. But, uh, guys, we're watching this. Uh, pay attention to it. I know we got a lot of things going on here on the planet. We're hoping that some people will come to 
to uh, their senses and open this country back up. But uh, I'm really concerned about the, what I'm seeing going on here. This is a heads up, guys. Be safe.